with our voice is raised in adoration to the one who has come to bring joy and give us peace and love. Solid night, holy night, and shepherds watched and flies with stars so bright. Holy one, God bless his son. Go ahead and praise him by saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
It all began when Christ was born. Why don't you turn to somebody and say, it all began when Christ was born. Tell somebody next to you, say, don't get it twisted. This party is not about you. The presence, y'all ought to go ahead and say it. The presence, not about you. Go, go ahead and tell your children, I love you and I want to share with you. But the presence is really not about you. Is there anybody in the house? You ought to just go ahead and give him some praise and say, Hallelujah. If you don't mind just going ahead and party with him, say, Hallelujah. It all began when Christ was born. To God be the glory. We come to make a joyful noise. Is there anybody in the house? If you can make a noise when you're playing, if you're looking at football games, a lot of y'all went to Christmas parties and all of that, and I'm sure y'all was making a lot of noise, but when we come to the Lord's house, it's all about him. None of it is really about us. They made it hard for me to preach this sermon today. Thank you, Pastor Relations. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. But I just want you to know it's not about us. It's really all about him. Is there anybody in this house? We love you. We thank God for loving us. But I always want to lift up Christ when it comes to worship, when it comes to him. Amen. To our members and to our officers and deacons and trustees and deacon wives and to the sons and to the ministers' wives and to our guests, to our radio listening audience, those that are streaming with us this morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. And we have a word that we pray that will find you well. So we want to go ahead and ask if you would join with us. Pray that you have your word. Your Bible, whether it's on your device or whether it's a hard copy, whether it's in the pew, we want you to just take it out and we want you to follow us. We're going to be going to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And I want to just lift up this one verse, verse 24. The context of this particular verse is Jesus is praying before he goes to the cross. And we want to look at one of the things that Jesus said he desired. If I can translate that, Jesus wanted. And it's very appropriate, even though some may not see this particular letter, this particular chapter, as it relates to this day, but it is very appropriate. And so I thank God for the Holy Spirit leading me here today. Let's look at John chapter 17, verse 24. And it says, as Jesus is praying, this prayer is known as the personal Lord's Prayer. Many biblical scholars tag it as the high priestly prayer. So let's look at what Jesus, Emmanuel, God in flesh, prayed for. Listen to what he says. He says, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am. Amen. Amen. That will also serve as our sermon text. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am. And I want to use as a sermon title based upon that particular text. It's Jesus 
What do you want for Christmas? Jesus. What do you want for Christmas? If I had to do a subtitle, I would, I would tag this, this. Jesus, what do you want for your birthday? I want you to just go with me just for a few moments. I want you to use your spiritual imagination if you're not still asleep. I want to challenge you to use your spiritual imagination. Imagine for a minute that it is your birthday and your best friend has planned a birthday party for you. You are super excited as you arrive at your party. I've seen some parties where parents would, they would hire limousine drivers, particularly on their child's 16th birthday. They have this fascinating event planned for their daughter or their son. And they ride up and they're excited. They're anticipating. And everybody is having a great time. Y'all having a great time? We're, we're, we're at a birthday party. Is there anybody in this house? Tell, tell somebody we're at a birthday party. A birthday party. At a birthday party. Everybody is having a great time, but, but for some reason, no one talks to you. Y'all following me? So here's how it looks. I want all the, if y'all just, all the preachers come down. I want you to just stand right there. All right, y'all want to just go over there. Okay. Stand right there. I don't want you to imagine this. I want you to see this. Can you all see? Okay. I, 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 I you know. I've arrived. I'm excited. They planned the party. I'm excited. And, and y'all be talking. Just talk. Just talk. <laughs> I'm the executive director. I'm, I'm producing. <laughs> and and, and, and here, 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 here's, they planned the party for me. And I walk in the party. And nobody talks to me. Have y'all, are y'all following me? Y'all tracking me? No, no, they still talking. And nobody has noticed me yet. And all of a sudden, okay, it's time for the gifts. Y'all just use this one and pass it around. It's gift exchanging time. And they're sharing gifts one with another. Nobody has come to me yet. That they're sharing gifts with one another. They're talking to one another and it's not their birthday. And I'm over here wondering do they really know that is my birthday. They still talking. Forgotten. Whose birthday is really all about. And they're having a good time. Sharing with one another. Your friends give to one another, but nobody gives a present to me. My wife said, don't, don't, I'll lose that. Thank you all. Let's give my hand. And I know in this day and time, it's hard to imagine a birthday party like this. A 
And yet, it happens every year on what is declared his birthday. We say that Christmas is the day that we celebrate Jesus' birth. And then we tend to ignore him. Don't want to rain on nobody's parade, but we have to begin to identify with not only this day, but every day should really be about. Children, especially, have a tendency to get caught up in the gift giving. But the reality in most of our kids, most of our children are thinking, what am I going to get for Christmas? Now, now, I don't want to be too hard on anybody. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to rain on this day because I know some people say, well, you know, this day should be a joyous day, and it should, but it's not because of me. Ms. Davis has already pointed out the joy is because of Jesus. Is that anybody in the house? But, but we have to help our children understand that even though it's all right. Let me just say so that no one go out feeling, you know, oh, I can't go to that church because they teach you about not giving gifts. Well, well, if I did suggest that you not give anything to your children, we have to teach them they have more than enough. Anybody in the house? The greatest gift that they can ever receive is not what's wrapped up in a box. Although it's all right to give them a gift. Because what we're demonstrating is that God kept giving and giving and giving. And a part of the giving is a demonstration or it's a manifestation of the one who lives in us that we give generously. Is there anybody in this house? But it's important that we help them understand. That Christmas is not about them. I, I am not saying, as I've already indicated, that we should not give gifts to one another on Christmas Day. I'm not saying that. Please, parents, don't hear me saying that. Husband, wives, don't hear me saying that. And I'm very appreciative of everything that you all have given and everything that you all have expressed through the generosity and the sharing. Our, our theme is a caring, sharing, fruit-bearing fellowship. And that's based upon who lives in us. What we understand giving is really all about. But I want to ask you to ask yourself this question. Have you ever asked yourself the question, what does Jesus want for his birthday? What does Jesus want for Christmas? What do you give Jesus? God in flesh. Emmanuel. Who has everything. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He owns everything. What do you give? What do you bring to Jesus on his birthday? Have you asked Jesus lately? Jesus, what do you want for Christmas? I believe if you ask that question, I believe Jesus would answer and say, here is my list. Anybody interested in the list? He says, I believe he would say, look in my word. You don't have to go to Macy's to try and figure out. If I've got a list at Macy's, you, you don't have to go to, 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 to Parisians. It used to be Parisians here, but, you know, you, you may have to go other places to go to Parisians. Is there anybody in the house? You just look in my book. 
in my word. Jesus says, I believe I won't. Number one, everybody say number one. I'm going to be out here soon. Look in John 17, verse 24. That's our text verse. I want you with me translated. I want you in heaven. That's what he prayed. Those who had been given to him by his father. He said, this is what I want. This is what I desire for my birthday. Whenever it may be designated in terms of years, but I'm not interested in the years, but, but I'm interested that you know that I was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger. And the shepherds came and worshipped me. The angels sang hallelujah. And I want you in heaven with me. He says in order for that to happen, you have to go over to John 3.16. Anybody know John 3.16? You ought to teach your children John 3.16. He tells you, he says, he says, he says here's, here's what the Holy Spirit must cause you to do. Not that you can do it on your own, but I want you to believe. Is there anybody in this house? In order to get into heaven, you've got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he's the one who says you shall have. Is there anybody in this house? Eternal life. You shall not perish, but you shall have eternal life. So I want you in heaven with me. I, I, I want you to believe. That, that's what I want for my birthday. That's, that's what I want for, for Christmas. And then secondly, he says, Jesus, I, I would ask him, Jesus, what else do you want? Would you ask him that, Jesus, what else do you want for your birthday? What else do you want for Christmas? Then he would say, look in John 14, 15. You all ought to write this down if you really want to know what he wants for his birthday. John 14, 15. Listen. Look in John 14, 15. Let's see what Jesus says. He says, if you love me. He says, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus says. In other words, if you translate if, he says, since you love me. He's talking to those who are disciples. He's talking to those that have been given to him by God. If you love me. Then keep my commandments. And just in case you get confused about the commandments, he says, look in Matthew 22, 37, and I'll clear it up for you. He says, love God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. Then he says, love thy neighbor <laughs> as thyself. And he says, on these two commandments hang all the law, and the prophets. He says what I want for my birthday. He says I, I, I want you to keep my commandments. I want you to obey me. Is there anybody in this house? Oh if you are given by God to him. He says I want you to not only be in heaven with me. Not only do I want you to believe in me as the only begotten son. But I want you to, to obey me. I want you to obey me. Love me. With everything. Then treat each other right. Is there anybody in this house? Love your neighbor as thyself. And then here's the third thing. Here's the final thing. Here's the final thing. He says, not only do I want for what I want for my birthday, I want you to be in heaven with me. I'm the one that brought salvation, making it possible for you to be saved. The only way that you can be saved is that you must be convicted. By the Holy Spirit to believe I am who I am. I'm Emmanuel. I'm God in flesh. Then he says, not only that, what do I want for my birthday? I want you to obey me. And then number three, he says, look in John 13, 34 and 35. This is what I want for my birthday. He says, a new commandment I've given unto you. 
that you love ye one another as I have loved you. And by this, the whole world will know you belong to me. The whole world will know you are my disciple. The whole world will know you are exactly the one that God has given to me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. But I want you to, for my birthday, this is what I desire. This is what I want. Love. And encompassed in love is forgiveness. The reason that I forgive because he first loved me and he forgave me. Can I do that on my own? Absolutely not. The only way that I can do it, I have to really belong to him. And if I belong to him, since I belong to him, he has given me the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit indwells me. He empowers me to do exactly what he wants me to do. Is there anybody in this house? He says, forgive. Somebody need to be forgiven today. Is there anybody in the house? He says, not only is forgiveness encompassed in love, unconditional love, the love of God, the love of Jesus, compassion. He said, I want compassion. I want a compassion, compassionate people. For my birthday, I want compassion. I want forgiveness. I, I want unconditional love. I want grace. Giving to them what they don't deserve. And he extends grace day by day to all of us. But not only does he want grace to be manifested in those that God has truly given to him, those who are truly genuinely saved. He also wants us to have mercy. Bring mercy. Is there anybody in this house? I want those who are my disciples to be merciful. In other words, what Jesus wants for his birthday is what Paul begged them to give. Then and what I stand before you today, and yes, beg us today to bring as a present to our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ on his day. And what is that, Reverend Flakes? You ought to read Romans 12, 1. You ought to turn there, young people. You ought to turn there, young adults. Look at what. Chapter 12, verse 1 says, he says, I beseech, I beg you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present, bring a present, present, offer to him your bodies as not a dead sacrifice, that was Old Testament. Is there anybody in this house? But in New Testament, he said, I want you to present yourself as a living sacrifice. Come on, somebody. A holy life. A life that's set aside just for him. How can I ignore him? Is his part. Is there anybody in this house? I want you to present yourself as a living sacrifice. Holy. He didn't say perfect. He said holy. That means I want to please him because it's all about him. Holy. I want to do things right. I want to be right in his eyes. I don't want to displease him. I want to be holy, set aside for his purpose, his cause. And then he says acceptable. Is there anybody in this house everybody needs to say acceptable? I'm just trying to tell you what Jesus wants for his birthday. <laughs> acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable. In other words, it's not unreasonable. It's not inconvenient. Your reasonable service. Is there anybody? In other words, your reasonable worship. Thank God for you being here today in this sanctuary. Hallelujah. But, but, but service is not now. We come to corporately worship him. 
But when we leave here, what are we offering up to him? On our jobs, in our homes, in school young people, in college young adults. What are we presenting to him? Kind of worship. Are we bringing to him? Our reasonable worship. So Jesus says, what I want for my birthday. I want you to be in heaven with me. I want you to believe. That's the only way you can get there. Not believe in yourself. I, 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 I want you to obey me. Obey my commands. And I want you to love me with everything. I, I want you to to love your neighbor because my love flow through you. And then I want you to be known as my disciples. The only way that you can be known as my disciples is you have to look like me. You have to love like me. You have to forgive like me. You have to show mercy like me. You have to show grace like me. I want you to be known in this cruel and mean world who's gotten it twisted and thinking that this day is about them. But I want you to let them know that this day is about the one who came down through 42 generations. This day is about the one who was conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit. This day is about the one who was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. This day is about the one that the wise men came and offered frankincense, myrrh, and gold. This day, they brought gifts to him. Is there anybody in this house? This day is about the one that the shepherds recognized that this is the one that the prophecy prophesied of. And they left singing and shouting that they had seen the Messiah. This day is about the one who went to a hill called Calvary. Gave his hands to the nails. This day is about the one who gave his feet to the nails. This day we ought to be celebrating around about now. This day is about the one who bled, suffered, and died. This day is about the one who hung his head and his shoulder and forgave us for our sins, atoning for our sins. This day is about the one. I got to go now. It's about the one who locked his head in his shoulder and, and gave up the ghost. He gave his life willingly. This day is about the one. Who said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. This day, young people, this day, young adults, this day, middle ages, this day, golden ages, is about the one who hung his head and died. This day is about the one who Joseph Arimathea and Nicodemus went to Pilate and requested his dead body that was in a bar or tomb. This day is about the one who stayed there all Friday evening and all Friday night. This day is about the one who stayed there all Saturday and all Saturday night. I thought somebody would be having a good time around about now because you recognize this day is not about you. You didn't die for the birthday. You didn't shed innocent blood. You didn't go into a bar or tomb. But this day is about the one who got up early a Sunday morning with all power in his hands. This day, can you tell me what his name is? This day is about Jesus. Can you say Jesus? The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, my rose of Sharon, my wheel in the middle of a wheel, my rock in a weary land my shelter in a time of storm this day is about the one is there anybody in the house who can say hallelujah what will you bring to him what will you bring to him what will you bring to him on his birthday 
But not just on this day, what will you continue to bring to him? The only thing that an unsaved person can bring to him is a saved life that's only convicted, converted, and compelled to respond to the Holy Spirit in his word. Those who have been genuinely given to him by his father. You come to realize, not on your own, that he desires me. He desires you as a living sacrifice. And I don't know where you are right now. The Holy Spirit is moving in this place. He's calling. What a great present you can present to him today by responding to the conviction, to the converting, to the compelling, to the drawing of the Holy Spirit. There may be someone here right now. I didn't say bring a present to church. But bring a present wrapped up, tied up in the word. Believing that Jesus Christ is who he say he is. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, believe sincerely in your heart that Jesus is Lord. He says, you shall be saved. You shall be rescued from the penalty of sin. You shall be rescued from the power of sin. Sin will not dominate your life. And oh, what a wonderful gift you receive from him. But he wants you to bring a living sacrifice to him. So if there's one here today, the Holy Spirit is drawing right now. He's moving right now. Respond to his drawing. Don't be ashamed. Don't resist him. Don't go into year 2017 uncertain about your eternal destiny. Because I'm here to tell you, you either end up with him or apart from him. I was at a funeral just the other day. Reverend Lawrence is a witness and some others. And I, 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 I pray for this man of God. It is not to condemn. But when he stood and said, I don't know where you're going to spend eternity. It, it saddened my heart. I wanted to cry right there. Because the Bible is clear. That you shall know where you'll spend eternity. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I can't put you in heaven. I can't put you in hell. But the Bible says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no one can come to God except they've got to go through Jesus. He's the one who said, I've come to prepare a place for you. I go away to prepare a place for you. And where I am, you shall be also. But you have to be with him. And if you're here today, we extend the invitation to Christ. The doors of salvation are open. The invitation to Christ is extended. The Holy Spirit is drawing. Will you respond today? Will you say yes to him? Yes, Lord. If you do not have a church home, we invite you to unite here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church where you can go in the word, the will, and the way of God. If you've never professed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, say yes to him. I say yes. What a great present to bring. My soul. Maybe you've moved into the city. You've moved in Phoenix City, Harris County, Fort Mitchell. You're, you're looking for a place where you can anchor. You can, place, you can have a place to call home. We invite you to come unashamed, unembarrassed, to unite here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. 
but we strive for the advancement of his kingdom yes Lord will you say yes in the name of Jesus you may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen God bless you God keep you is my prayer if Jesus